Hi, welcome back to another speaker's tip. Today I'm going to continue on with my series on effective Zoom calls or Zoom presentations. And I'm going to focus not so much on the speaker's presentation skills, but on the digital interface that we have. Realizing that no matter how good we are as speakers, our image and our words are interfacing through a digital interface. And if that digital interface is not set up properly, it's going to scramble and it's we're not going to come across like we want to. Early in the series, I was sharing that I was doing a series of interviews and my audio was lagging way behind my video and it required a lot of editing work afterwards because I was recording videos that I was putting into an online summit and we had to match the audio and the video back up afterwards and there was a lot of extra work that went into that and I couldn't figure out what was going on, on with my internet connection, why I was lagging so much. And I brought in a computer expert to come in and tell me what was going on. And he goes, your internet's fine. And then he started running components on my computer. And this was an older laptop that really came out before there was a lot of Zoom interface that was going on. And my processor speed on my laptop was not sufficient to handle the video and audio interface that I was doing through Zoom. And there were some specific reasons. I wanted a laptop with a long battery on it. So I had a smaller processor so it didn't burn up so much of the battery when I was flying and whatnot. I wanted to be able to work on my computer for a long time. And then I tried to use that in Zoom and it wasn't working. I shared with you several tips back that I actually bought a gaming computer with a high level processor on it so that I could have effective Zoom calls. Now let's just look at, well, how much of a processor do you need on your computer? And by the way, I have a new laptop, which is right in front of me right now, and it works great on Zoom because probably six years later, they've upgraded the processing power and it handles Zoom just fine. I didn't have to go out and get a special, special laptop. The camera isn't as good on it, though. I will say that. But what, what type of processing speeds do we need? When I looked into this, it, it showed that you really need a minimum of about one gigahertz on a uh, single core drive. Okay, that's the minimum you need, one, one gigahertz single core drive. What's recommended is a dual core drive with two gigahertz of processing power and about four megs of RAM, or excuse me, four gigs of RAM. So that's not that much. That's pretty much meets with every computer you run into today. But if you're having problems with your upload and download, if you feel, if you see you're lagging, check your computer speed out. And you can also go online, which is all I did. I went online and Googled in or searched for what computer speeds do I need for effective Zoom calls? That's where I got the information for this call because I don't have this stuff on the top of my head. I've got to go find it out. So that's one component of just making sure that your computer can process the audio and video interface that you have. Another recommendation I do make is turn off the other programs on your computer so you don't have things running in the background, eating up your RAM or eating up the processing power that you have. And you know, who knows, your computer could decide to update or something in the middle of your Zoom call and all of a sudden a bunch of your processing power is taken away from your Zoom call. So turn off your other programs, do your Zoom call, and then turn your programs on when you're through with the call. Now let's talk about upload and download speeds. Now in most internet advertising, internet programs, they promote the download speed to your computer because that's where most of the big bandwidth happens. As users, we don't upload a lot to the internet, but we're downloading movies or downloading content from websites. And it's that download speed that you wanna get because there's a lot of bandwidth coming down to your computer. But when you start doing Zoom calls, you're now uploading video to the cloud and you need enough bandwidth to get that video up in good form so that it's either not breaking up or like I said, your audio isn't lagging behind your video, whatever, whatever is happening, it's all synced together. So the upload speed is something you need to know what, your, uh, what you have with your, your current provider. And what you can do is you can take your computer and you can type in internet speed test and search that. And you're gonna come up with three or four different speed tests and just click it and they'll run a speed test right on your computer for you. And you can see what, 
what your upload and download speeds are. I just ran it on mine and I have 11 gigabytes uploading and I have 181 gigabytes downloading. And I have cable is what I have here at my house. Now, a couple of things to look at. Who else is on your network? And depending on how your internet set up, some systems are set up that if your neighbor down the street is downloading a bunch of stuff, it affects your, your bandwidth. But just in, even in your immediate household, like if my wife's here and she's watching a video while I'm trying to do a Zoom call, is that going to interfere with my Zoom call? It doesn't on my system right now. I have enough bandwidth and I'm able to upload and download without a problem. But that's one of the things to look at. Who else is taxing your system? But what type of upload and download speeds do we need? First of all, I'm just going to say right up front, your download speed's probably fine. You are downloading video from Zoom and that does matter. But the video is not a huge file. And usually you have more than ample download capacity with most providers as I checked this. On the upload, it's somewhere between 1.5 and 3 megabytes per second, okay? 1.5 to 3, you can go as low as 0.8 megabytes, but usually about 1.5 to 3 is going to be sufficient for your upload. So run your check. I've got 11 on mine, so I'm in good shape on my upload. But that's one of the things you want, to, you want to check out. And as a matter of fact, last week I was in Michigan, in northern Michigan, at visiting some friends, and they had satellite. And I had to make some Zoom calls, and I logged in, and I just checked online what satellite was. And satellite was about four to four and a half megabytes per second upload. So I was safe with that. But they said they had a very difficult time doing any type of Zoom calling out in their cabin where they were because they, they can't get cable and they can't get the other um, other providers, internet providers, so they have a satellite provider that they have for that. So those are some of the things to watch on when you're doing your Zoom to make sure that you're set up properly. Processing speed on your computer, and then what is your upload and download speed, and what on your internet interface, and then what other programs do you have running, and who else is on your immediate system that could be eating up bandwidth and taking it away? Because you might check it and it looks like it's great. And then all of a sudden you have problems. So one of the things you can do too, if you're getting ready to get on a Zoom call, go to that speed test, type that in the search bar, run a speed test and see what your speed is right before you go on a Zoom call if you're having problems. Now, one of the things that I see happening fairly frequently, and I see this in the Toastmasters environment a lot, that I will go to do a presentation at a Toastmasters group and they'll tell everybody to turn their cameras off. Now, my understanding is that does not affect the ability of Zoom to operate because it's all on an individual basis. It's not like the overall Zoom room or Zoom presentation is getting taxed. That's on an individual upload download basis. Turning all the cameras off, to my knowledge, doesn't have any effect at all. And from my standpoint, I'm gonna go over talk about presentations now. I wanna see the faces of the people I'm talking to. I don't like it when the cameras get turned off because I can't see who I'm talking to. So there may be, I might have a misunderstanding and I may not understand the nuances of that, but I've just spent a couple hours researching this. I haven't found anything that says turn your cameras off. So my recommendation is, and when you're on Zoom calls, is keep people active, keep them engaged. We are talking person to person. So you like to see the person, not talk to a blank screen with a name written on it. You know, anyway, I'm sure there's a good joke I can throw in there from that standpoint, but how many, how many times do you actually like to talk to somebody? That's the thing we're missing. We've been missing for the last year and a half. So anyway, I hope this gives you a little more insight into effective Zoom calls. I have covered most of the questions that I would receive from you on Zoom issues. Right now, this is the last Zoom tip I'm going to give for the time being. If there are other Zoom questions that you want me to address, please send me an email. You can do it. Just respond to this email that I'm sending to you right now. Send me an email. I'll put those on my list of topics to cover, and I will cover those probably down the road in a couple of weeks. But right now, this is going to be the last of my Zoom calls or Zoom, pre Zoom tips because I've made a list of what everybody asked me to talk about and then what I knew to talk about, and I'm done. So anyway, I hope this has been beneficial to you. And I'll see you next week with another tip.